Hey folks, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I have a special guest, Matt Harrison, who is a reverse mortgage professional. I think that's all you focus on, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, right? It is, yes. Yeah, I somewhat met Matt at a, a continuing education course at the Salt Lake Board of Realtors, and considering half my business deals with seniors and probate, you've seen the other types of interviews we've done here on the channel. I thought it'd be good for us to sit down and talk. And uh, before we started recording, Matt and I were talking a little bit about the Heckam for Purchase and some of the changing numbers in terms of demographics and supply and demand for housing for people over the ages of 62 and even 55. So Matt, but maybe you can go ahead and start talking about some of those issues. Yeah. So I think, you know, a good place to start is, you know, let's, let's define what a Heckam is. You know, we use it as an acronym in our everyday vernacular, but Heckam stands for Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. And, uh, you know, the nickname for it is reverse. And, you know, I'd say, for the most part, reverse mortgages, unfortunately, have a very bad rap and they're very misunderstood. And a lot of people will say, well, wait a minute, I thought a reverse mortgage can only be used on a house that you're in and if you're in dire straits. You know, this program has changed so much to where it really is a premium program that seniors over the age of 62, or if you are young and spry and you're over 62, let's call it what it is. You know, we have a lot of our you know, older population that uh, is still very active and they're doing a lot of things. And you know, this provides a, a way for them to have more safety and security in retirement. As we get older, you know, our, our lifestyle could potentially change. Our income definitely does for most of us. But the house that we're living in might not fit our needs the way that we would like it to. You know, the, the idea of, of downsizing or going into a smaller property, I like to use the term right sizing. Can we right size into a property that better fits our needs, that can provide a, a more safe environment, maybe even a lifestyle environment that's going to be better for that client? Maybe they're not close enough to grandkids. Maybe they want to go to warmer climates. Maybe the house they're in is too big or too small. Maybe it has stairs. All of these things are going to be important factors as far as trying to figure out, does the house I'm in fit my needs? And you know, maybe it works and it's fine, but if it doesn't, what does that next house look like? And what is the availability, Steve, as you look out there right now in, in, in the community for 55 plus or single level ramblers, you know, it's, it's kind of scary. There's, there's not a lot. And that's the thing is we're seeing that the wait list at any sort of independent living or assisted living, memory care, you got to wait sometimes a year to get in some of those places. There's a lot of seniors that are on fixed incomes. So getting a traditional mortgage is a problem. Even if they sell their current residence, sometimes they still have an outstanding mortgage or other liens. So they can't just directly buy a house fully with cash. But even if they could, they end up being cash poor. Like they, they just, they have a house, maybe it's paid off, but then they're still struggling to eat. It's a real problem, especially with the current economics. Not only do you have a low supply of housing that is appropriate for them, but the economics have made it to where they can't even afford to buy one of these places to downsize. They almost get stuck. But I think that's the power of the Heckam for purchase. Yeah, I'll give a great example of this. I worked with a client years ago. I was doing real estate myself. You know, uh, my client called me up and they said, Matt, we can't do this house anymore. It has stairs. My wife fell down the stairs. She broke her hip. We have to get into a house that is a single level. And I said, great. And I went over and I did a listing presentation for them. The value of their house was about 500000 And the house that they really wanted to be in and the neighborhood they wanted to be in had a starting price of 700000 They didn't know this initially. And when I told them, they just had this look on their faces. They said, oh, well, shoot. We, we don't think we can make that work in a traditional sense. We don't have the ability to stroke a mortgage payment on a $200,000 mortgage. We're on social security. We've got fixed income. It's just not going to work for us. I said, do you have retirement funds you can pull from? And they said, yeah, we've got you know a 401k. We've got about $400,000 in there. If we take $200,000 out of that 401k, along with the $500,000 amount that we get out of the sale of the house, we're going to cut our retirement account in half. We don't feel comfortable about that. I said, well, do you have any kids or anyone else that can help you? They said, we don't. I ended up getting them into a home that still worked, but it wasn't in the community that they wanted. One of the benefits 
of the reverse mortgage program. And had I known about it then, it would have been something I would have brought up is they would have been able to buy that $700,000 home, their cash investment required for them at their age at the time was about $400,000. So they bring in $400,000. The reverse mortgage loan itself comes in with the additional $300,000. And in their scenario, if they've got a $500,000 home and they're able to only have to use $400,000 to purchase a $700,000 home, they would have been able to take that additional $100,000 and augment their 401k from 400 to 500,000. So they would have been able to get into this home, be in the community they wanted and be in a better financial position as far as their overall retirement accounts. It's funny. I've seen people pull out of retirement to buy homes a million times, like a 401k or some other investment account. I've seen them do it for their kids too, which I really don't like. And then, of course, they have to pay the tax penalty on it. I don't understand the logic of it. But I think a lot of seniors are sitting on homes that have a massive amount of equity. Mm -hmm. And what I think some people think about is, oh, well, it costs so much money. It's like, well, when you're living in a house, you're not using the equity unless you have a HELOC or some sort of line of credit on it. It's just, it's, it's like you have locked it in the chest and buried it underground. So I don't, I would rather see people utilize the equity in a way where their monthly expenses are not burying them. Because again, I mean, I've said this before, I really have seen people eating cat food and dog food. I've seen it. Or I've seen people who have the lights off all the time. They never turn on the AC. I mean, I've seen all that stuff. because Or or the heat in the wintertime. It's like, why is your house so cold? I can't afford to heat it. It's funny because I can take a picture of my house. Let's say my house is worth $800,000. I can take a picture of that and I own it free and clear and I can go down to the supermarket and I can get my groceries and I can show them a picture of my $800,000 home. And I can say, I have an $800,000 home of equity. Here, Here it is. I don't, you know, I own it free and clear. In fact, I even chiseled off a brick of my house. I did the math and this is, you know, I think it comes to about $200 for this brick. I'd like to buy my groceries. Now, you and I know that the grocer is going to sit there and say, okay, that doesn't work. And in retirement, the number one biggest concern for our retirees is cash flow. Do we have enough money? You know, can we, you know, hopefully we've got enough money to survive retirement, but can we really thrive in retirement? And that's, I think, where this this program really starts to shine is that there's nothing wrong per se about a pathway of owning a home free and clear. You own it free and clear. It's yours. You don't have a monthly payment. But is another pathway potentially more efficient in the use of cash flow from that property to allow for you to enjoy a better retirement? And that's really the big question. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny with thinking about just like their quality of life and the equity. One of the things that people bring up, but I, I pretty much am going to present the counter argument is, well, they're robbing the inheritance to their kids. I've seen kids who've sat there and it's like they won't do the reverse, but then they're paying money to mom every month. They're spending all this money and they end up selling 99% of the time they sell the house after death, you know, because half the business is that I, that I do as probate or trust sales. What I would rather see is kind of like, I actually have a current transaction right now in Salt Lake where, and they did this before I was pulled in, they moved her into memory care, but they got a reverse mortgage four years ago. They owe like 250, the house is worth close to 700. Now I was talking to them and I said, well, I'm, I'm surprised you did the reverse for your mom. How did that work out for you? She said, oh, Stephen, this was the best decision we ever made. Because we were able to unlock the equity out of the home. You know, dad died years ago Mm -hmm. and she had struggled. We knew the house was worth so much and we weren't having to just pay out of pocket. There wasn't this emotional burden and all this coordination of, well, here's your allowance, mom. It's like that money just locked up in the house. But yes, she was able to get food, pay the bills. And oh, now she's able to move move into memory care. We're selling the house, they'll pay off the reverse, and then the money that's left over is going to move into an account to help pay for her stay in memory care until she passes. And that's just a reality working in this space. So I, I think that's one thing that people will object to on any sort of heckum is it steals the inheritance. But I do believe in inheritance. There's some people that don't. But in the end, parents shouldn't be a burden. If they have the money, they need to take care of themselves. And part of that means taking it out of the house. 
when I, you know, I have parents in a reverse mortgage, I will do a reverse mortgage the moment I hit 62. And Stephen, it's not because I need it to survive. I really want to thrive in retirement, as I've, as I've talked about. If I pass away and I, I give a house that's paid for free and clear to my children, which, by the way, is not my goal in life. This is not something that I'm aspiring to do to give my my kids a bunch of money at the end. You know, I I for me and my wife, we want to be able to enjoy our retirement. We want to be able to hold our heads high to say that, hey, we can pay for our own stuff. But above and beyond that, I want to build memories with my kids and my grandkids. I, that, that's what they're going to remember about me in the future. I, I plan on doing reverse mortgage vacations and saying, you know what? Kids, grandkids, we're going to get everyone together once a year and we're going to go and do something really fun. Maybe we'll fly you out somewhere. Maybe, you know, we're, we're paying for hotels and we're doing all of this. Yes, we are using some of your inheritance in the future, but we want to build memories. We want to make sure that, that you have a lasting memory of us and the times that we were able to share together. And that's really what matters at the end. You know, we talk about giving inheritance away with a warm hand or a cold hand. Cold hand, we've passed, it's done. Here's the money. We don't know how, how they used it. With a right. warm hand, we can do it very judiciously and a reverse mortgage can allow for something like that. If if I'm looking at the biggest concerns with a reverse, it's going to be, well, I, I've heard that the bank owns my house. That's not the case. The bank does not own your home in a reverse mortgage, no more so than a regular loan or lender owns your home if you have a traditional mortgage. There's a lien on the house. You have to be at least 62 to do a federally insured reverse mortgage uh, you know, through FHA, you can go down to 55 for some of the proprietary, but there's an age limit there. It has to be a primary residence. You have to pay property taxes, insurance, maintain the property, and it needs to be typically the primary residence of at least one of the borrowers. But after that, this is all about the efficiency of money. And as we move this forward through time, there were huge changes made back in 2017 where the loan balance within the reverse mortgage started, you know, the, the maximum amount went down. So if we have the value of the house here and the loan balance used to be here, they started it lower. Well, why did they do that? They did that because as we project forward through time, you have the value of the house projected to grow and in the first few years is projected to outpace the loan balance increasing. Mm -hmm. In most cases, there's going to be equity remaining, but even if there's not, let's say there's a huge crash in the market. The heirs of the estate are not stuck holding a bill. This is a non-recourse loan. And yeah. the kids can either walk yeah. away and give the home back, you know, basically, you know, do a deed in lieu of foreclosure. And they've got a wonderful program called Cash for Keys right now that can give the heirs up to 12,500. Or this is a, a guaranteed short sale. They can buy the property back at 95% of the current appraised value if it happens to be underwater. So again, if the value is supposed to be here, but we're in a really down market and the value is here and the borrower passes, at that point, the heirs of the estate, they can buy this home at a discount and retain it. The difference between what they buy it for and what is owed is taken care of with the mortgage insurance. It's one of the best insurance policies you can get. I didn't know that about the short sale option. With the, yeah. with the I didn't know that. That's interesting. Isn't that fun? But you think about this, Stephen. How cool is this? They could hold this property indefinitely or wait for the market to then go back up to where it's supposed to be and then sell it. Yeah. So as a heir of, of, of my parents who have a reverse mortgage, we are not going to have to pay a bill at the end. The best case scenario and the more likely scenario is there's equity remaining. But in no circumstance are we having to come in to pay a bill at the end. You're not having to bring money to the table. Well, see, it's funny. I mean, this is, I, I still feel a little on topic, but 2008 really scared people with any sort of down market, short sales, foreclosures. I, I actually have sold one bank owned property this year and I have a second one coming up. And uh, so I've been having a lot of conversations lately and I've told people, listen, these mortgage, these lenders, the servicers, the banks, they do not want your home. Mm -hmm. It costs way too much money for them to take that home back. Like they always take a loss. I mean, I've seen it and it's just, 
you know, people still struggle to understand that. It's like, well, how could they lose money? It's like, well, because they're going to have to come in and fix the home. They have holding costs and they, they, you know, had to file in court. I mean, it's just this whole step. I have one listing right now. I don't know how this exactly happened, but they bought the home a little over a year ago. They never made a mortgage payment. And the bank still has not taken it from them. They are still working out with them because they listed it with me. Now, that wasn't the case, you know, 20 years ago. Now they're like, we really don't want it. Please sell it. Let's let's try to figure it out. We're trying to figure out if they'll approve us for a short sale, but I might have a buyer. But either way, that short sale option is really neat. In Utah, have you seen the use of Heckam's rise in the past? couple of years and do you foresee it continuing to increase? Yeah, absolutely it has. I think a lot of that is just awareness. Mm -hmm. People are beginning to understand what the reverse mortgage program actually looks like and that it's not just a program for those in dire straits. This is a great program that can be used, you know, by anyone that's looking to buy a property. You know, again, you just look at efficiency of money. If you have the money available to buy a home cash, you can do that, but is, is there a more efficient pathway that can allow you to retain more liquidity to where you can use that in retirement? And again, this is something that more and more people are starting to realize. And I think that that's one part of it. The other part is because we have a lack of inventory, especially in Utah, we have an aging population that needs a very specific set of homes that's going to fit them. When you have a supply demand imbalance, you're going to start to see prices rise. And so someone that's in a home that they need to sell, they're looking at the home that they really should be in, and that home doesn't quite fit the price point as far as what they can afford. And especially, you know, if someone has a home right now, maybe they've got a, a, a mortgage on it, and maybe that mortgage is in the 2 or 3% range. As you said before, Stephen, they may feel like they're stuck. Like, okay, well, I can't afford a, a payment in the sevens, as far as an interest rate, that just doesn't pencil, especially if I got to pay more for the property, I don't have the money to do it. The nice thing about a reverse mortgage is you can take the equity position in the home that you're in, you sell that, you can then use that to go buy a property that's going to be a better fit for your needs. And you don't have to make that principal or interest payment. You can now move into higher price points you can sell a $500,000 house and buy a $700,000. Or let's say that maybe your home that you're in is $600,000 and you want to buy a seven dollars or $800,000 home, or maybe it's a million dollar home. We can start to work through those numbers and it's very simple math. But saying, okay, you've got option A, you come in cash. Option B, you do a traditional mortgage. Or option C, you use a reverse mortgage to purchase this house. Here's your down payment requirement. The reverse mortgage proceeds comes in and takes care of the rest. And then at that point, moving forward, you're done. You have to pay property taxes and insurance and maintain the property, just like you would if you paid for cash. But now you're just being more efficient. What I think is we will continue to see more and more of it because of the aging population. But you said the number. I've heard it a million times. How many people turn 62 every day? Approximately 10 grand. Uh, 10,000. <laughs> 10 grand. Yeah. Uh, 10, 10 grand of people. Yeah. You know, 10,000 people. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I think I saw it's like um, 38% of all homes are owned by baby boomers. It was between 40 to 50% of all transactions last year were done by baby boomers. Interesting. In real estate. I did not know that. It's thing. huge. The number is massive. And that's nationally. It's the growing frontier, so to speak, um, but it's a reality. It's a reality because there's going to be people that need to stay in their homes for various reasons or to maximize the enjoyment of retirement. Um, well, I, I really appreciate you coming today. So let's uh, wrap this up. Matt, tell us how people can find you best and uh, interact with you. So the easiest way, I'll give out my cell phone to your, your group here. It's 801 Three three zero two two zero zero again eight zero one three three zero two two zero zero. I am licensed in twenty two states. This is what I do. I don't do any other mortgages. Reverse is what I have really loved and come to be passionate about. You can also reach me at matt harrison at movement com. I would be more than happy to run through scenarios, help educate. This is all about helping. You know our. Older population enjoy more safety and security in retirement. Awesome. 
Well, hey, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Of course, we're going to chat once we stop the recording here. Um, but anyways, till next time. Thank you.